Today I'm going to be looking at screen calibration and how we can use screen calibration to get better prints. Basically if your screen colours match what you're seeing coming out of the printer then you're going to have a lot more success with your printing. And we use a little device called a, a screen calibration. Now I'm going to be using in this video the Data Colour Spider X Pro. We do sell the Data Color products and the x ray products. I will be doing a separate video on the x ray i1 Pro as well. Very similar devices, but both have their own softwares and things, and you could just do something slightly differently in them. But today, just gonna be running through the Data Color and the Spider X. So, let's get started. So what I've done is you may have seen that the room has got a little bit darker. That's just because I've shut the blind here because I was getting a little bit of light coming onto the screen here. And I want this to be as neutral as I can get it. I don't want any light coming across because that is going to affect our editing in general. The other thing I've done is I've plugged in the Spider X to the USB port on the, on the um, side of my BenQ monitor here. Next thing is just to open the Spider software. Now, this could be in your Applications folder, it could be in your Start menu if you're a Windows user, it could be in your Dock if you've put it in there. But just you just need to click, double click on the icon and open the software. Okay, so here's the software. And it just loads up asking us to first of all, just read through and just tell us what it's gonna do. So this is basically telling us a little checklist. So we leave the display on to warm up our lighting conditions so we haven't got anything directly shining on the display like a lamp, or in my case, the, the sun coming through the blind over there. We've got everything, all the display controls, we know where they are, the color temperature is set as we need it to be. And we've also connected the spider. So we've done all that, so we just need to click next. Now we're just gonna tell it we're on an LED widescreen, which is what our monitor is. I'm going to do a full calibration as well. You can just recalibrate every so often and it's a lot quicker to do. Oh, we can check the calibration, so it just um, tweaks it for us and just checks if everything's okay. I always do a full calibration, even when I'm just updating something. It, it takes 30 seconds longer, so we say, than a, a recal or a, a check calibration. So I just do that in a way because it, it just does the full cycle for us. So what I'm going to be setting this to is our current settings down here. Now I would like to get that brightness closer to 100 if I can, so I will be doing that. Our white point is at 6500, so that seems to be our neutral white point on our monitor. Also our gamma is 2.2. So we'll be doing that. You can go into here and change these settings as well, so we can just go in here and, and alter these brightness settings and things. However, I would just leave them generally at a recommended set. So, I'm just gonna click next. And now, it's asking us just to put the, the uh, sensor on our desk here. And it's just gonna measure the room light for us just to see if there's anything coming onto the screen or anything. Now, the brightness level it recommends is 180, 180 luminance, which, to be honest, is a little bit too bright, especially for prints. For prints, you need anywhere around from 100 to 120. So what I want to do, I don't want to use their recommended target settings that it's just measured. I just want to keep my settings that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to click next. Now it's asking us to put the sensor onto the screen. So on the sensor, it comes like this. We take off the back, and this is a weight, so we can hang it, and the sensor is in there. That's where it's gonna measure the light for us. Now, and if you think about the BenQs, if they've got a little hole on the top of the um, hood here that you can slide this into. And we just go down like this. I like to also shut it, so it just gets that little bit of wire there, so it's a little bit more support. Now if we just let it dangle, it's not going to be flush against the screen and it's going to give us a bad reading. So we just need to hold it gently onto the screen like so. 
Then we'll just click next. Now it's going to throw some light at us and it's just going to measure some light. And... So it's come up and it's asked us if we want to adjust the brightness here. Now the recommended value of, is, of what it is saying is within this green bar here. So this green bar, we need to get it in. Actually, it's not too bad. I would go, I'm just gonna put it up a little bit higher than that. And I'm just gonna use the brightness controls on the monitor here. So I'm just gonna go up one, because I want it closer to 100, to be honest. And then I just have adjusted it, so I'm just gonna click update. So we're at 97. I wonder if I can just get it a little bit closer to that magic 100 I want. There we are, absolutely bang on, perfect. So I'm just gonna click OK on the monitor and just save those settings. And now we've set our luminance. Now I'm just gonna click continue. And then I'm just gonna carry on with the calibration. It's gonna fire lots of colors at us again. And this is just measuring like a color spectrum of light. It's doing the same process as a printed printer profile would be doing, but instead of the colour being printed on the paper is in a patch form. This is firing the patches through the monitor and measuring the amount of light and how those colours are produced. And then making that correction in the software so we can get a lovely nice neutral screen. And this usually takes about a minute. So. And it's just pinged to let us know it's complete. So now we can take off the calibrator. We don't need that on the screen anymore. Shut that, then I'll put the sensor back. I'll just put the cover back on and just pop it there. Now that is the calibration complete. Now all we need to do now is just save that profile. So we click finish and it's just asking us here to put in the name of our profile. We can save it as the date. We can save it as a name. If you've got multiple displays, you can just name them as and when you want. Also a calibration reminder, I would say keep it a month, you should recalibrate every month really, um, just to make sure everything is as it is, as it should be. Now we've clicked save, now we've created that profile, we can click next. And we can now do a before and after. If we click switch, we can go backwards and forwards between these two here. And we can zoom in on one of these pictures. So this picture here is skin tones in. So before, it was really quite warm and but now we have brought it down and got a lot more natural skin tone in there so now what we can do just click next and this will show us how much of the gamut of color the different color spaces the monitor is actually displaying so this BenQ at the minute with that calibration is 98% of RGB Adobe RGB which isn't too bad, that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna click quit. And then we are finished. So that is how to calibrate your screen from start to finish with the Data Color Spider X. I hope that's helped. And please remember, I will be doing this with the i1 Pro as well to take you through as it is slightly different software. Principles are the same, but things are just in a different place. So I will be running through that a little bit later and put, posting it on our YouTube channel. And also if you've enjoyed the videos today, please have a look at my other tutorials on colour management and also on Photoshop and Lightroom tips as well. Thanks very much. Bye bye.